This is a live demo of Oscar on the air. My operating is all over the place, so it's warts and all, I'm afraid. It's the first time I've videoed a, a live QSO, so there was double the pressure. That's my excuse anyway. And just like performing music, you can be 100% perfect in practice, but as soon as it's live, your brain turns to mush. Now, the original idea was to encourage beginners to get on the air instead of practicing forever offline. The usual excuse, and I'm just as guilty, is to tune around looking for CQ calls which are slow enough for you to copy. But you could be waiting forever and missing a lot of opportunities. According to the code of practice, senders should slow down to your speed. So this is meant to demonstrate this and show that there's nothing to lose by just diving in. Now as it turned out, the three contacts I made while the cameras were rolling proved to be exceptions. Murphy's Law. The first was very short, so there was no need to ask for them to slow down. The other two contained more information, so I asked them to QRS. One didn't, and one did, albeit by a small amount. But I've still gone ahead with the video to show that this is life, and should not put you off, even if you end up muddling your way through it like I did. And what's the worst that can happen? You can always abort the call, and nobody will hold that against you. I've added the CW translation as a caption along the top of the screen, so cover it up first if you want to pretend you were me hearing it live. I filled in all the many blanks afterwards and corrected some mistakes by replaying the video at slow speed. It's interesting that both the issues discussed in Oscar's design are present in these QSOs, and they do make it harder to copy. It's not just the speed. That's my opinion anyway. The bottom line is, don't let this stop you jumping in. I had three contacts here, but if I'd waited for a slow enough CQ, I wouldn't have had any. And the more you try, the easier it'll get. I won't talk over the three QSOs, but at the end I'll finish off the process by showing my old school way of logging the calls and sending eQSL cards. By the way, the transmitter fan noise is not as bad as it sounds. The vent just happens to be almost facing the camera's microphone. Murphy's second law.
OK, now to finish off the process and get them logged. As you've probably realised by now, I'm very much stuck in the past, so this may resonate with some of you, but others can skip this if you're using an up-to-date logging system. And my old logbook was one of these. Spot the date. And these were the days, in the UK at least, when every transmission had to be logged and initialed, including CQs and test calls. And your station had to be available for inspection at any time to make sure you were still competent to be let loose with the transmitter. Now, I still like to keep this log going for nostalgia purposes. It's also something tangible to pass on. So here are the three QSOs made today. Now, this needs uploading to the interweb for confirmation with other logs or to send EQSL cards. So it needs converting to the standard format called ADI. Now, there are lots of logging programs which do all of this, but I use a variety of computers and operating systems. And of course, they're all very old, if it ain't broke, as they say. So it was difficult to find one which would work anywhere. The other issue was that online sites support different subsets of the official ADI fields. So in the end, I decided to keep the master log on site in a simple tab separated format. This means it can contain any fields I choose, even some non-standard ones of my own. I'll then use a homebrew utility to convert this to ADI format for uploading to any of the websites, and they can accept whatever fields they choose. Here's the spreadsheet. There are more fields if I scroll to the right. Now it may seem clunky, certainly for contests, but I'm not interested in those. And the advantage is the log is not tied to any particular computer or operating system. Any old computer can open these files, either using a spreadsheet program if it has one, or if not, a simple text editor. And the conversion utility is called Toady, tab to ADI, and this too can run on any old computer. It's run from the command line, like this, and the first example converts the whole log file and the second just converts a subset, in this case from line 35 to the end. And these correspond to the latest three entries I just added. This creates two ADI files. And the reason for doing this is that one of the five websites I'll show later needs the whole log to be uploaded every time, whereas the others need a subset containing just the new entries. Now you don't have to upload to every site, but I'll just show examples of the five I tried. The screens and prompts may be slightly different depending on your computer. Here's QRZ showing the logbook page. Click the upload icon and this screen appears. Click choose file and select the ADI subset file and click open. Here's QRZ CQ. Click logbook. This shows your current log. Click upload. Click choose file. Select the ADI subset file and click open. Then click upload ADIF logbook. This one's also got a nice map feature. If you click log map, and if you zoom in a bit, okay, here's ham log. You click upload my log, click choose file, select the ADI subset file and click open. Then click upload start. Here's hamqth, click upload log, click choose file, and this is the site which needs the whole log file uploading, so select the full ADI file and click open, then click start upload. And finally here's EQSL, which as its name suggests handles EQSL cards if you want them. Click upload ADIF. Click Choose File, select the ADI subset file and click Open, then click Upload. And here are some examples which can be printed and stuck on the wall if you want, just like the old days. OK, that's it. Hope that was interesting. More details and links are in the description below. 73s and thanks for watching.